are an educator, a teacher, and you started seeing what's happening on the Israeli borders in the news. Tell us how you came to that decision to be involved yourself. Okay, as you said, like the whole world, I was glued to the news, watching and hearing the terrible testimonies from Syria. You know, we are in the 21st century. It's 2015, 16, 17, unlike 1939. And I refer to Second World War, and specifically, I'm thinking about the Holocaust. Unlike 1939, nowadays, everything is, is online. Uh, it's a world of social media. The information can fit into the palm of our hand. We hear the victim stories and the horrified testimonies at real time. We saw cities and villages that were completely destroyed, ruined by Assad regime. We saw chemical attacks, families that were torn apart, thousands of killed and injured men, women, and children. When I, I'm saying thousands, uh, I'm talking, they're talking about 500,000 sp- uh, p- killed people and more than one and a half million uh, people uh, that injured. About, uh, they're talking about 12 to 13 million refugees and displaced people. Women were raped and so many terrible stories that arrived to us. We just couldn't stand silent. Um, I must say, moreover, uh, Syria is almost walking distance from our northern villages. Israeli people could actually hear the booming while they were sleeping peacefully in their bed or sitting around bonfire in camping trick or vacation. Uh, this huge conflict between the two realities, you know, one peacefully and one so horrified, so close and yet so far, was unbearable and horrifying. So the combination of all of this together made us feeling very strongly that we must act. We must offer an end to the people beyond the border. And from realizing that you wanted to do something about this to actually doing something about it, which is a very different thing, Tell us how that happened, because I'm sure that a lot of people were thinking like, how could we be involved? We've been in a war with this country for so long. How could we fit into this equation? So what what were the thought process following your decision that you can't just stay silent? One of the major turning point was on September 2015. I remember seeing the photo of three-year-old Alan Cordy, that was his name, whose body was washed out of the sea in Turkey. It was a terrible ending to his family journey, seeking for freedom. At that time, I share with you, my youngest son was the age, of, uh, the, the same age, and even resembled Alan. And I remember telling to myself that Alan's family fate in other story, in other period, could be ours as well. One minute you are living a normal life, you wake up in the morning, you eat breakfast, you go to work, the children go to school, to kindergarten, normal life, like a Syrian civilian had before. And the next minute your world is uh, turned upside down. So I kept this photo in my room. I must tell till today, I don't know if you can see it, but it's in my room, Uh, it's this photo. Mm-hmm. And I swear to myself, I promise to myself that I never ever forget. This was one of the biggest turning points for me uh, to start acting. Uh, as a human being, I understand that I can't stand silent. As a Jew, as an Israeli neighbor, as a woman, as a mother, as a daughter, I felt that I simply cannot stand silent. And I felt also very strongly that the words never again, which were said after the Holocaust, must receive a a practical meaning. They can't stay just words. And that was the practical meaning for me. And so we started later on, very soon later on. 